Welcome to part two of this concise video log on COVID-19 vaccination considerations for an aging person with HIV. This program is provided by Clinical Care Options and is supported by independent educational grants from Gilead Sciences, Merck, Sharp, and Dome Corp, and Vive Healthcare. This vlog was recorded by Dr. Rajesh Gandhi. Before we begin, please note his disclosures on this slide. This vlog is part of a comprehensive educational program on caring for aging patients with HIV. You can gain CME, CE, or CPE credit for viewing these vlogs and download the slides by visiting our website, clinicaloptions.com. Hello, I'm Dr. Raj Gandhi from Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. I just saw a patient with HIV who wanted to discuss COVID-19 vaccination. In part two of this two-part video log, I'm gonna talk about the details of this patient and how I counseled him on what we know and don't yet know about COVID-19 vaccines in people with HIV. So let's talk about the patient's background. He's a 60 year old man. He has hypertension and hyperlipidemia. He's been on antiretroviral therapy for 10 years. His CD4 cell count prior to starting therapy was 100 and he's currently on dolgitegavir plus FTC TAF. He has a number of COVID exposures. He works directly with customers as a bank teller. His CD4 cell count now on antiretroviral therapy is 300. His viral load is undetectable. He's overweight with a body mass index of 28. His complete blood count and metabolic parameters are normal, and his co-medications are lisinopril and atorvastatin. So are COVID-19 vaccines safe and effective in people with HIV? In the summer of 2020, a number of um, activists and protests um, resulted in Moderna altering their protocol in the summer to include people with stable HIV, and Pfizer uh, clarified that people with stable HIV could be included in their trial. And so people with HIV were participants in both of these large uh, randomized um, important landmark studies. The second question is, are vaccines safe and effective in people who are older like my patient? So here are the pivotal phase three trial uh, data for the Pfizer vaccine and prevention of symptomatic COVID-19. This is a randomized placebo controlled observer blinded trial in which participants who are 16 years of age or older receive two doses of the Pfizer vaccine or placebo 21 days apart. There were almost 44,000 people in this uh, phase three randomized trial. The vaccine is a nucleoside modified mRNA vaccine. It encodes the membrane bound full length spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This phase three trial included 196 participants with stable HIV. Who was in the Pfizer trial? A little over 50% were male, just over 80% were white, about 9% were black, and Hispanic Latinx was 28% in this trial. 57% or so were over the age of 55, and about 35% had a body mass index of over 30. These are the data on the safety and efficacy of the Pfizer vaccine. So in the vaccine group, a little over 18,000 people, there were eight cases of symptomatic COVID-19. And in the placebo group, there were 162 cases of symptomatic COVID-19. So when they calculated the vaccine efficacy, the vaccine efficacy was 95%. They looked at a number of important subgroups. The vaccine efficacy was similar in men and women. It was similar in different races and in different ethnic groups. They also looked importantly at the vaccine efficacy in different age groups. And you can see those data on this slide. You can see that the vaccine efficacy was similar and was similarly high in the different age groups. So people who were younger had a 95.6% efficacy and you see similar rates of efficacy in people over the age of 55, even in people over the age of 75. Now, what about the safety of this particular vaccine in the different age groups? Interestingly, the common local and systemic reactions to the vaccine, such as pain, headache, fatigue, and fever, were actually reported less frequently in those who were over the age of 55 as compared to younger individuals. And these data are reassuring that the safety of this vaccine does not seem to be dependent on age. And the number of serious adverse events were really quite infrequent uh, in both the placebo group and in the vaccine group. Now, what about the people with HIV, the 196 people with stable HIV who were in this trial? 
Thus far, the safety and efficacy data for the people with HIV were not included in the primary analysis. So we don't have that um, granular data yet, but we do have the overall vaccine efficacy uh, for, the, for the vaccine itself, as well as in the different important age groups and um, uh, racial, sex, and uh, ethnic groups. Now let's look at the data for Moderna. Um, this is the phase three trial for the Moderna vaccine. This too was a randomized double-blind study. This was placebo-controlled. In the Moderna study, participants were 18 years of age or older. They received two doses of the vaccine or placebo 28 days apart. The Moderna vaccine enrolled just over 30,000 individuals. Just like the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine is an mRNA vaccine. The mRNA encodes a pre-fusion stabilized spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The Moderna vaccine had a little over 52% uh, of the participants were male. Uh, just under 80% were white, 10% were black, and about 20% or so were Hispanic Latinx. Just under a quarter were over the age of 65. And the Moderna trial enrolled 179 people with stable HIV, 92 in the vaccine group, 87 in the placebo group. Here are the efficacy results from the Moderna vaccine. There were 11 cases of symptomatic COVID-19 in the vaccine group out of 14,000 people or so for an incidence rate of 3.3 per thousand person years. In the placebo group, by contrast, there was 185 uh, cases of symptomatic COVID-19 uh, out of uh, uh, somewhat over 14,000 individuals for, with an incidence rate of just over 56 per thousand person years. So when they did the calculation, the vaccine efficacy for the Moderna vaccine was 94.1%. When they looked at severe COVID-19, does the vaccine prevent people from getting severe COVID-19? They found zero cases of severe COVID-19 in the vaccine group and 30 cases in the placebo group. So this translates to a vaccine efficacy of 100%. When they broke it down by age, you can see that uh, those individuals who were 18 to less than 65 years of age had a vaccine efficacy of just over 95%. And in those who were 65 years of age or older, the vaccine uh, efficacy was 86.4%. Now there's a fairly broad um, confidence interval. So I would say that even over the age of 65, we're seeing a very high efficacy. And I, I don't make too much of the difference uh, between uh, under 65 and over 65. I think in both groups, we're seeing very good efficacy. Similar efficacy for the Moderna vaccine were reported for males versus females and across racial and ethnic groups. What about people with HIV? Here we have a little bit of information. There were zero cases of symptomatic COVID-19 in the vaccine group among 80 people who had HIV, and one case in the placebo group out of 76 people who had HIV. The numbers are not large enough to make strong conclusions, but at least no evidence that the vaccine didn't work in people with HIV. The numbers are just too low to, to, to make a definitive statement. Here are some safety considerations for the Moderna vaccine. Injection site pain was the most common local adverse event in vaccine recipients, almost 89% uh, after the second dose. Just under 80% of vaccine recipients experienced a systemic adverse event after the second dose with fatigue being the most common. But this is the important point. Most of the adverse events were mild to moderate. They did increase in frequency and severity after the second dose, but they were mostly mild to moderate. There were very few serious adverse events. And just like in the Pfizer vaccine, the older population, those in this case over the age of 65, actually had less frequent injection site pain and systemic adverse events than those who were uh, younger than age 65. So where are we with these two vaccines? It's well known that the US FDA granted emergency use authorizations for the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines in December 2020. The Pfizer authorization is for individuals who are uh, 16 years of age and older. And the Moderna vaccine authorization is for those individuals who are 18 years of age and older. The Pfizer dose uh, are separated by three weeks and the Moderna doses are separated by a month. Now, an important point here is that there are no data on interchangeability. That is, we don't know if you can mix and match these two different vaccines. So right now it's recommended strongly that if you get a, a dose of a particular vaccine, the second dose which should be with the same vaccine that you got the first time. What are the current CDC recommendations around people with HIV and COVID-19 vaccinations? Well, as we talked about in the first part of this video log, 
people with HIV might be at increased risk for severe COVID-19. We've seen some data that persons with stable HIV infection were included in the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine trials, both the Pfizer and the Moderna, but the data are limited, um, under 200 people in both of those uh, big vaccine studies. So what do we tell our patients with uh, HIV? What would I counsel my patient? Well, I do think people with HIV, as well as other immunocompromised individuals, may receive the COVID-19 vaccine as long as they don't have a contraindication to the vaccine. I do counsel them, and the CDC recommends that we should counsel them about the unknown vaccine safety profile and effectiveness in immunocompromised populations. There is a potential for reduced immune responses, and so therefore, any immunocompromised person, any person with HIV, and to be honest, anybody uh, who's vaccinated for COVID-19 should still continue to follow all current guidance to protect themselves against COVID-19. What about contraindications? Uh, just in the last week or so, the CDC has updated their recommendations around contraindications. So contraindications for these vaccines include having had a severe allergic reaction after a previous dose of the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine or any of its components, an immediate allergic reaction of any severity to a previous dose of a mRNA vaccine or its components, or a reaction to polysorbate, which is um, related to one of the components of the COVID-19 vaccine. So let's bring all of this uh, information back to our patient. He's a 60 year old man with HIV. He has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and, is, and he's overweight. So these are potential risk factors for severe COVID-19. He has ongoing COVID-19 exposures. He works as a bank teller with customers. He has a low CD4 cell count Nader 100, and he has an incomplete CD4 cell count reconstitution. His CD4 count on antiretroviral therapy is 300. So I would recommend COVID-19 vaccination as soon as it is available. The data I've shown you for both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines show that the vaccines have high efficacy and acceptable side effects, including an older individual such as my patient. I would counsel him that we don't yet know the extent of protection in people with HIV. And this is true for all people, not just people with HIV. We don't know how long the protection will last and whether the vaccine will prevent acquisition and transmission of infection. The data that we have so far is on symptomatic COVID-19. So for all of these reasons, I would counsel him to continue to wear a mask and maintain social distance even after he's received the vaccine. If you're interested in my previous discussion of this patient and the potential prioritization of people with HIV for vaccination due to the potential risk of severe COVID-19 outcomes, please see part one of this two-part video log. Thank you.